Tonight on Bridge City News. Yesterday's snowstorm in eastern Newfoundland and Labrador set a record for snowfall amounts and has left one person missing. Travelers returning from central China will be required to undergo health screening at some Canadian and U.S. airports to protect against an international outbreak of a coronavirus. And a new study is helping veterinarians determine how to treat cats for pain. Your nation. Your province. Your southern Alberta. From the heart of Lethbridge, it's Bridge City News with Paul Arthur. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. At least one person is missing following a major snowstorm that hit St. John's and other areas of eastern Newfoundland and Labrador yesterday. The RCMP say 26-year-old Joshua Wall left his home in Roach's Line on foot yesterday but never arrived at his friend's home. The storm dumped a record-breaking 76 centimeters of snow on the ground in some areas and forced the closure of the St. John's Airport until at least Sunday morning. There are reports of thousands left without power and the city of St. John says a state of emergency will remain in effect until further notice. The Lethbridge Skating Club held its Frozen Fest event today at the ATB Centre. There were lots of young skaters on hand, enthusiastically showing off their skills to family and friends. Skating coach Olea Tabulchanis explains. Uh, this, this event's a great opportunity for skaters at a beginner level to showcase their talents and get used to um, being in front of a crowd. Most of the little guys, they skate one to two times a week. And so on our Can Skate, our Learn to Skate program, we have hockey players, ringette players, uh, figure skaters, and people just learning how to skate well so that when they go away for Christmas break and they're skating on a pond, they can have a, a fun time playing shinny. So we've brought in skaters to provincials for Special Olympics. We've worked with ringette players, we've worked with uh, hockey players, if you or your children would like to get involved in one of their programs, check it out at lethbridgeskating.com. Another local sporting event, the Lethbridge Ironman Archery Tournament, got underway today at the exhibition grounds with youngsters and adult archers competing for cash prizes. Monica Higgins from Lethbridge Bowbenders tells us more. The Ironman is a shoot that we've had in place for just about 25 years. Next year is our 25th anniversary. Um, it's a combination of two disciplines of archery, uh, 3D and target. A lot of people will practice five, six times a week for this. They'll spend hours practicing. You know, myself, I probably spend four days a week at about two to three hours at each session practicing. The tournament wraps up tomorrow. The Lethbridge Antique and Toy Show attracted a good crowd of collectors at the Italian Club today, shopping for some very cool retro toys that make me wish I hadn't disposed of my old Tonka trucks as a kid. Oh, you never know what you're going to run across on these tables. Some of this stuff is people have had for years. And every year they bring out something different. You don't know what's going to show up. We have uh, vendors from uh, as far east as uh, southeastern Saskatchewan and he's brought a lot of new uh, farm toys in the box, brand new stuff. And we have guys from Red Deer that have trucks and uh, construction equipment. And an uh, antique guy from uh, Cranbrook. And local people here. The event runs for one more day tomorrow from 10 till 4. A 31-year-old Lethbridge man is facing multiple charges after police tried to arrest him on Thursday when he allegedly stole a pickup truck at a Southside convenience store, but the suspect refused to stop and police discontinued the chase because of public safety concerns. However, the following day, police investigated numerous reports of three hit-and-runs involving the same truck. Officers located the vehicle in Coaldale, only to discover the man had driven off with another truck. Finally, last night, police located and arrested Daniel McFadden inside the Lethbridge safe injection site. The governments of Canada and B.C. are turning over a large swath of land near Cranbrook to Indigenous peoples. The land was once planned for the Jumbo Glacier Resort, but a new agreement extinguishes all development permits and brings to an end a decades-long fight that went all the way to the Supreme Court. The Tunaha First Nation will receive $21 million to help develop and plan a protected area, while Glacier Resorts received an undisclosed payout in exchange for giving up the permits. 
The province of Manitoba has granted Manitoba Hydro a license to build an 80-kilometer transmission line that will help boost power sales to Saskatchewan. Construction of the Bertle Transmission Project is expected to begin this summer. The cost of the project was pegged at $69 million in 2018. The line will provide Saskatchewan, which still relies on coal-powered electricity, to meet the power needs for 82,000 homes. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is heading to Winnipeg today ahead of a three-day cabinet meeting with his 36 ministers that starts tomorrow. Trudeau's office says the regional outreach is worth the added cost of ferrying ministers around the country. The Prime Minister held seven cabinet retreats outside of Ottawa in his first term in office. The choice of Winnipeg is a nod to the east-west divide that was exposed in last year's election. Airports in Toronto, Montreal and Vancouver are adding an additional health screening question to electronic kiosks and are reminding travelers from the central Chinese city of Wuhan to inform a border service officer if they are experiencing flu-like symptoms. The move comes amid concerns surrounding a new coronavirus in the city that has killed two people, sick and 41, and prompted worries about an international outbreak. In the U.S., a top official at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention spelled out their plans to screen airline passengers. We're very concerned about this because it's an, attributed to a new coronavirus, and that's a disease that we haven't seen before. A coronavirus is a class of viruses that can cause the common cold, but it actually can also cause more serious diseases like MERS and SARS. Starting tonight, we're going to begin screening passengers arriving from Wuhan into the United States at the three airports that see the majority of those passengers. The airports are JFK, San Francisco, and Los Angeles. CDC will be deploying close to 100 people by this weekend to help support the staff in those airports with screening. When passengers disembark from these flights, they'll get questioned. Most passengers will get questioned get their temperature taken and be sent on their way. But passengers that are potentially at risk to have the novel coronavirus, that is people who are sick and have been exposed, they're gonna get additional questions and they may actually be sent for a medical workup. We're screening passengers returning from Wuhan into the United States because we want to detect this virus early. The earlier we detect this virus, the better we'll understand it and the better we'll be able to detect, protect people. A new study out of the University of Calgary and the University of Montreal suggests feline facial expressions can help determine if a cat is in pain. Researchers say cats are notoriously hard to diagnose when it comes to their pain levels and historically are under prescribed medication as opposed to dogs. The study says tense whiskers, flattening ears and closing or narrowing eyes can all be signs of suffering. Dr. Daniel Pang explains. We were really interested in seeing if we could assess pain in cats, especially if we could assess it quickly in a really user-friendly way. Well, we found a way that seems to work pretty well, where we're looking at their facial features. So we're looking at their ears, their eyes, their whiskers, their muzzle, and the position of their head. So we're kind of combining those five things together, um, and in combination, it gives us a pretty good idea if cats are painful or not. With the ears specifically as an example, we're looking to see if their ears are going from a nice forward position when a cat is comfortable and happy. As they become more painful, the ears start to ro rotate backwards towards their tail, and they start to flatten off as well. Or with their eyes, for example, instead of having nice, open, rounded eyes, they, they start to squint, and eventually their eyes will close altogether. As veterinarians, we find it hard to identify pain in cats, and because of that, it's hard to make a decision or make the right decision sometimes as to when we should be giving pain relief, and tied to that, whether the pain relief we've given is actually working or not. Recapping one of our top news stories, residents in eastern Newfoundland and Labrador are digging out from yesterday's record-setting snowstorm, which has also left one person missing. And a look at weekend weather, our seemingly endless week of bitterly cold temperatures is finally coming to an end. Sky should clear overnight with a low of minus 20, but the temperature will actually rise to minus 8 by morning with that Chinook rolling in. For tomorrow, sunshine and a high of plus 2, along with a west wind gusting from 40 to 60. Many of us know what it's like to deal with the effects of chronic pain. Are there any practical solutions? Lethbridge naturopathic Dr. Clayton Cogano thinks so. Hal Roberts has that interview coming right up. But first, here's a look at what's happening in and around your community.
Here's your Bridge City News community calendar. Warm your hearts this season and come enjoy the Winter Light Festival at the Nika Yugo Japanese Garden until January 31st. Gates are open from 6 to 9 p.m. Experience the illumination of over 100,000 lights decorating the beautifully shaped trees and garden. Admission is $9 for adults, $7 for kids ages 6 to 15, and various ticket packages are also available. For more information, visit nikayugo.com. Blank is for Canada Lethbridge meets Thursdays from 10 a.m. to noon at Southminster United Church. Share your knitting and crocheting skills to keep those who are in need in our community warm. Donations of yarn and financial gifts are greatly appreciated and can be dropped off at the church. For more information, visit blanketsforcanada.ca or call 403-329-6586. And that's your Bridge City News Community Calendar.